Um, okay, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, tonight's uh, South American Geometry webinar. Um, just a quick reminder that uh, if you wish to subscribe to our mailing list for announcements, uh, just send the word webinar to our email to be found on the chat. Also, if you wish to join our WhatsApp group, just then again, you can join it directly from the link provided. You can check our schedule of uh, future talks. The schedule uh, for the whole year is now complete. So we're going to be having these talks every fortnight uh, until December. Uh, you can check our calendar uh, at the link, as well as check our previously recorded talks in our YouTube channel. Um, so don't be shy. And uh, these lists are strictly professional, so you'll only get announcements or the occasional geometry job opportunity. You won't get any spam. Uh, today, uh, we welcome uh, Luis Fleury from IMPA, big name in uh, geometry in our country, and uh, is going to be telling us today about extrinsic surgeries for positive scale curvature. So, Luis, uh, thank you so much. Let's do 50 minutes plus five minute questions. If that's okay. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation for this webinar. And um, I would like to talk about uh, a Nash type theorem um, for scalar positive scalar curvature. And I will try well, I will try to, to make a, a understandable for for most of you, certainly even if you don't never thought about this topic before and try to, to give some proofs at the end. I hope the time will, will allow me to do this. Uh, this is a joint work with Bernard Hanke from the University of Augsburg. Uh, we began to work on this several years ago and it was a pretty, pretty technical stuff. So I will try to, to make that uh, as light as possible, okay? So let's begin. Uh, the scalar curvature, as, as you all know, it's uh, an intrinsic invariant of the Riemannian manifold. It's a, simply the average of all sectional curvatures. And it's, it's a way, another way of looking at it, it's, it's a way to control the volume of balls compared to balls in the Euclidean space given by that formula. Right? Uh, and actually, that is interesting because you may think about trying to, to define scalar curvature on spaces that are more general than, uh, than Riemannian manifolds, like in metric spaces where you, or spaces where you can talk about the volume and balls, right? So why uh, do we care about positive scalar curvature? I will call that PSC. So the main reason we, we work, we study about uh, positive scalar curvature is because of um, a way of prescribing curvature. This is a, this is a very classical topic. So to, to what extent when you have, say, a function in a surface, when there exists a, a metric whose uh, Gaussian curvature is that function. So of course for, scalar curvature, we can ask exactly the same question. So if you have a manifold uh, and a function on the manifold, when there is a, a remaining metric whose scalar curvature is that function. And that is answered by this beautiful theorem in Invenciones in 75 by Kazan and Warner, then they essentially prove that uh, if, if you have any function uh, that change signs, then there is a, always a metric in a compact orientable manifold whose scalar curvature is that function. And, but if, if, if it doesn't change sign, then uh, it's trickier. So uh, there exists a metric with, that, with scalar curvature being that function, if and only if there exists a metric with positive scalar curvature. So, in other words, the, the problem is completely solved 
uh, if and only if there exists a positive scalar curvature method, if, if and only if the manifold is PSC, right? It turns out that uh, uh, not every compact orientable manifold is PSC. Right? There is an obstruction. Yeah. To, to state the obstruction, I need to talk a little bit about spin manifolds. If you want, for us, a spin manifold is simply a manifold whose second Stephen Whitney class is zero, if you want. Um, and it turns out that two spin manifolds are spin bordant. That means that there exists a compact spin manifold W, uh, which whose dimension is one bigger than the manifold N and M prime, uh, such that M and M prime are the boundary of W. That is a re equivalent relationship between spin manifolds and uh, the spin classes of under this relationship is called the spin cobordism ring that we we uh, denote by this uh, by this symbol here. Right? And there is a topological obstruction to PSC regarding precisely this uh, spin cobordism uh, ring. So uh, what Hitchin, Hitch, first Lichnerowitz in seventy in sixty three and then Hitching in seventy four, they proved that if M is spin and PSC, then the A hat genus vanish. And what Hitching proved, in fact, is the A hat map from the this cobordism ring to the K theory of a point vanish. And this is a topological thing. This, this A head genus essentially is related, or can be by, by uh, Atiyah Singer theorem, can be related to the, to the Dirac operator, to the kernel of the Dirac operator. So now we know that if it is spin and PSC, the A hat genus must vanish. And interestingly, these for, for simply connected manifolds where they mention B or equal to five, these are all the obstructions. A very famous theorem by Stoltz in the Annals, proving solving the gromov lawson conjecture, says that this is the only obstruction, actually. Uh, for simply connected manifolds with a mention B or equal to five, uh, there exists a PSC metric if and only if the A hat genus vanish. And actually, this, this conjecture came from gromov lawson from, from a paper in Indiana in the 80s, that showed that if M is not spin, then automatically it's PSC. It needs a positive scalar curvature. And if M is spin, and spin more than to PSC manifold, then it's PSC. So what this shows is that if it's not spin, it's PSC. And if it is spin, it's actually a proper, being PSC is a property of the cobordism ring, not only on M, but all, all the classes of M in the same, uh, in the same class, bordant to, to M. Right? So what, what did uh, Gromov and Lawson show, actually? Right? So uh, by a, a theorem by Smale in, in 62, he showed that uh, M uh, is obtained from M prime. Uh, so when, when two manifolds are spin bordered, then one is obtained by, from the other by surgeries of codimension B or equal than three. I will talk about it. What, is it, what, the, what a surgery is in a moment. Yeah. So codimension B or equal than three surgeries are absolutely essential in this theory because uh, if they are spin bordant, then uh, they are they are obtained from surgery. So we can reduce the question to surgeries of codimension bigger or equal than three. And this is exactly what Gromov, Lawson, and Schrein and Yao uh, showed. So in, in the in their very famous paper in the 80s, they proved the most important theory in, in the field that says that. Uh, if, if a manifold is PSC and is obtained from another, any other manifold obtained applying surgeries of codimension bigger or equal than three is also PSC. So in other words, what they prove is that the class of PSC manifold is closed under 
surgeries of co-dimension bigger or equal than three. So this actually uh, uh, is the key to everything else, to, to all that I told before. This comes out from this uh, very important theory, the most important in the, in the, in the field. Right? So our purpose was exactly to prove, to make an extrinsic proof of this result. First, to give another proof, maybe simpler, or more importantly, is to prove that the PSC submanifolds, Euclidean submanifolds, are also closed under codimension B or equal than three surgery. So what that means is that if I have a, a, a manifold, a PSC manifold, and I, and I apply a surgery of codimension B or equal than three, I can still make that a submanifold in the same Euclidean space. Well, what is a surgery? A surgery is a natural generalization of connected sums, and it comes from this. So take, take a disk in Rn and a sphere, which is the boundary of the disk, in the case where n is equal to 1, S0, the sphere, is just two points. It's the boundary of an interval, of a closed interval, so it's two points. So that is kind of strange, right? that the zero sphere is actually two points and not one. But this is because we think of a sphere as the boundary of an interval. And surgery uh, comes from a very natural uh, fact, that is that uh, the product of two spheres is actually, as a manifold, is the boundary of two different manifolds. Is the boundary of a disk cross a sphere or a sphere cross a disk. Right? So with this, we can... Uh, make a surgery in this way. So suppose you have an embedding of, an so you have an open set of, of M that is actually a product of a sphere and a disk. So you have an embedding of a sphere and a disk, uh, or equivalently, of course, you can have simply an immersion of a sphere with trivial normal bundle. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, exactly equivalent. K here is the codimension of the surgery, what, what, I, what I referred before when I said codimension bigger or equal than three, what I meant is that this K is bigger or equal than three. So suppose then you have an embedding with flat normal bundle, and then what the surgery of codimension K determined by phi, of, observe that the surgery depends on phi. So what you do is you take N, you subtract this, the image of phi, and, and in the boundary, you glue the disk cross the sphere. So you, here you're using that the boundary of this submanifold is actually also the boundary of this other submanifold. Uh, this, if you think about the case when n is equal to zero, this is exactly a connected sum. Of course, you can make connected sum with the same manifold. You, when you take two points, you can take the two points from the same manifold. So this is actually a, a generalization, a natural generalization of connected sum. And what is interesting here is that when you do this, so you have m and m hat, and it turns out that m and m hat are also cobordal with this elementary cobordism. So it's a trivial cobordism between these two manifolds. And it turns out that this, all these elementary cobordism generate the, the ring, the cobordism ring, and by uh, results of several authors, Morse, Tom, and me. So any question until here? Any questions? So we say that an immersion in, in, in R n plus p is PSC if the metric induced by f on m is also PSC. We call f a PSC submanifold. So again, an immersion f uh, is PSC if the induced metric has positive scalar curvature. Remember, PSC means positive scalar curvature. 
So our aim is uh, to prove that the surgeries in, in the Gromoglossal theorem can be done extrinsically. That is, I can, if, if I have a manifold that is PSC, that is a codimension three surgery from M, then I can make the codimension three surgery still on, on the same ambient space and preserving the positive scalar curvature. Preserving in the sense that it also has positive scalar curvature. And this is exactly what we show. So if you have a, a positive scalar curvature submanifold of a compact manifold with a codimension, at least the dimension minus one, observe that this is, this is, is exactly the codimension given by Whitney's theorem, right? So we know that M always admits an immersion in Rn plus P by Whitney, right? Then any manifold obtained by N, M by a surgery of codimension B or equal to three also admits a PSC immersion in the same ambient space. And uh, well, of course, as always, almost always in some manifold theory, this, this extends to a scalar curvature bigger than C in spaces, in space forms of curvature C. So uh, a remark, observe that uh, if M admits an immersion in R N plus P, but it does not admit an immersion in R n plus p minus one. For example, the projected space is an example of this. Then it admits no PSC immersion in the same ambient space. So this is this is uh, because of Cohen immersion theorem. So you you certainly you all know that with a famous theorem that any n dimension and manifold admits an immersion into R 2n minus 1, right? But this is what maybe some of you don't know, that it, this is not a sharp result, at least not for, for any n. So uh, we are going to see now the, the, the sharp result, but uh, any n-dimensional n manifold, compact n-dimensional manifold admits an immersion into R two n minus one minus the number of ones in the binary decomposition of n, and that comes from Cohen proof of the immersion conjecture that essentially says that the the best possible codimension where you can put m is that where the the normal bundle is trivial. So when you have a, when you have it trivializing the stable bundle of M, when, when it is trivial, the least dimension when it's trivial, that is where you can make an immersion. And what we are we can see using the the, the Gauss equation is that if you have a PSC immersion in R M plus P, then the the normal the mean curvature vector never vanishes. So in particular, the normal bundle splits a line. In particular, the normal bundle of the immersion has a trivial subbundle. Always, if you have a PSC immersion, it has a trivial line bundle. In particular, the normal bundle is not trivial. It's, it's, it's not, it, that is not the stable bundle. In particular, the least dimension where you can put n is one at least one less. And okay, so from our our theorem, we can prove a Nash type uh, corollary for PSC. Nash type in the sense that what is Nash? What says Nash theorem? Nash theorem says that if you have a metric in your manifold, when you can. Uh, find an immersion whose induced metric coincides with that metric. But you can, you can make uh, several Nash theorems in this sense. When you have a manifold and you have some 
Riemannian property, for example, that has positive scalar curvature, when does it, it exist in, in, in submanifold, in immersion, that preserves that property? For example, the immersion has positive scalar curvature. So this is a Nash type uh, theorem in the sense that we are asking a, a something for the metric. Mm -hmm. And what we have is, is this corner. Right? So pick a compact, simply connected manifold of dimension B or equal than five, as always. And let alpha of n the number of ones in the binary expansion of n. So in particular, we know that m admits an immersion in R 2n minus alpha n, because so this is what Cohen theorem says. And then uh, if m is uh, not spin, then m has a PSC immersion into R 2n minus 1 mi plus delta n, where delta n is this number. So, of course, if n is big, in general, generically, alpha n will be of the order of uh, n over 2. So, in general, if n is big, this number will be 0, actually. So, what it says that generically, uh, m will have an immersion into r 2 n minus 1, and that is precisely the Whitney codimension of the codimension given by the Whitney theory, right? So we can essentially maintain PSC in the Whitney codimension. That is if M is not spin, and if N is spin, we have a very similar result, just a little bit bigger. This delta N will be just a, little, a tiny bit bigger uh, given by this. So in, in, in in the worst case scenario, what you have is that M will admit an immersion in R to N plus 12 in the worst case scenario. Okay? Okay, so let's let's try to give an idea of the proofs of, of these results, of these two results. Okay, so pick a compact PSC submanifold with second fundamental form alpha and let S n minus k in, inside m a sphere with trivial normal boundary. We are going to, we are trying to now to, to construct this, this extrinsic surgery. Okay. And the proof uh, is divided into five steps. We first a, do a homotopy of the second fundamental form. So we solve the problem only a, a, along our sphere S. S will be our sphere of dimension M minus K where we are applying the surgery. And we, we want an homotopy for, of the second fundamental form making the positive, the abstract positive scalar curvature big, as big as we want. We need it to be big to have a flexibility to apply the next steps. The second step is uh, we realize this abstract second fundamental form with a, a local PSC immersion. So now we pick a, 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 a neighborhood of our sphere and we solve the problem of finding uh, an immersion ft whose second fundamental form is alpha t. In particular, because of point one, it has very big curvature, very very big scalar curvature, positive no. and very big. Can I of ask, course, can I ask it is a question. Say it again. Sorry. Can I, can I just ask a quick question? Sure, yeah, sure, sure. Sorry. Well, when when you insist on algebraically, do you, do you mean by polynomial data, why, why do you mean it to be algebraically? Yeah, algebraically means I just find a tensor that a uh, abstract tensor using, of course, the second fundamental form of of M. I found a, I find a tensor whose uh, uh, scalar curvature is very big. 
I, I will. I, I, I am only uh, given a, a rough idea of the, the first, the, these five steps, and then I will go to each one individually. Okay, cool. Okay. So the second step, as I said, is to find an immersion, realizing this abstract second fundamental form, but only in the neighborhood of our sphere, not on M. M, of course, I cannot do this with M uh, magically. Or, or maybe I can, but I cannot do it by hand. What I need to, to, uh, to call now to make it global is to, to make use of the H principle of Gromov and uh, we use something called the weak flexibility lemma to de fact extend this immersion F defined only on U to an immersion of the whole M. And this is actually the reason why I needed a, a, an homotopy of, of a local solutions, because this is what the H principle means. The H is by, because of homotopy. So we need an homotopy of F near the, the sphere, and then I can extend that homotopy to the whole M. But this is only part of it. The only thing I did with this is to, to make our, around S to make the, 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 the scalar curvature very big. This is the only thing I did up to this point. But I will do it in a very symmetric way in order to uh, use gromov lawson trick, but now extrinsically instead of uh, intrinsically, they didn't actually, Gromov and Lawson did this kind of extrinsically in the sense that they put M into the a product space and they worked in a product space in M cross R actually. And then they, 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 I will, we will cut, cut F hat, the, this solution near S to, to, to make a, a very symmetric neck very symmetric and then the last point is to construct the surgery handle using the, the symmetry of the neck i will construct a surgery handle and here we need some topology so let's go step by step the first step was to make an homotopy of the second fundamental form and what so as i as i recall the scalar curvature can be written like this, and as you see, because of Gauss equation, simply. And as you see, the, that means that the, the normal, the mean curvature vector is always non-zero. And th this is what I said before. It always split a line. Any PSC, uh, some manifold, has the property that the normal bundle splits a line. In particular, it's not the stable, the normal, uh, the stable normal bundle. That's why I always need one dimension more to make a, 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 an immersion with positive scalar curvature than the one given by coin result. And it's very simple. This, of course, I use the, the normal, the mean curvature vector to define this uh, abstract uh, second fundamental form. Right? So this is a tensor answer in Enrique question, this is a tensor defined from a TM cross TM to the normal bundle of, of my original manifold, and this abstractly has very big scalar curvature in the sense of Gauss equation. If I apply Gauss equation to this alpha T, it has a very big uh, scalar curvature. Okay, so by algebraic, all, all you mean is that you can write it down explicitly, right? This is what you want. Yes, this, the, but right. I, right, I mean exactly this. Right, okay. Exactly this. Cool. I, I write it explicitly. By, but of course, this is just a tensor. There is no immersion. What I, I'm going to do now is to realize this as an immersion. And this is a step two. Realize but only, of course, in a neighborhood of my sphere, right? 
in the name of U of my sphere. And this is also very easy to do. Uh, all I need to do is to do this trick where mu is the distant function to the sphere and b of b sub t is this function here. Right? It's cosine minus one. But I want it to be a little bit more round. So, uh, okay, so uh, these immersions satisfy this property. It coincides with f in u, with f of t in s, and the differential also coincides along s. And this is very important because of, of the weak flexibility lemma, we need these properties to be satisfied. But now the, the explicit construction is this. This is the inversion that in, in polar coordinates for the disk, this is the inversion uh, ft explicitly. Right. And it satisfies everything I said about the second fundamental form in the neighborhood of u of s is my alpha of t. And now the step three, use Gromov H principle. Right? Uh, so and this is uh, actually the weak flexibility lemma is an exercise in Gromov uh, book, Partial Differential Relations. Uh, and it's exactly stated like an exercise and it, say, it has a hint that says use induction. Well, it turns out that uh, it took 40 years to be published or 35 years to actually this exercise to be published in print in a paper, right? And, and uh, for us, the only thing that matters is that this F, F hat T that we constructed before in a neighborhood of our uh, sphere can be actually extended to the whole end. This is the magic of the H principle. So we can anomotopy, and this is the important thing. This is why we needed an anomotopy. The, omoto, the local homotopy can be extended globally. This is what the H principle says. For any open relation on a compact manifold and a, a local homotopy of formal solutions can be extended globally to a, an actual solution. This is what allows us to construct these, uh, these f hat uh, that now are PSC. And the only thing that they have, what, what is the difference between this f hat and our original f? That around our sphere s, they have a very symmetric shape and have very big curve, very big scalar curvature. This is important because now we are going to cut this. And this is, this is exactly the idea here. Huh? We, we cut F hat around S, uh, adding a bending curve to make a standard revolution neck. Mm -hmm. so, so around S, we have a very symmetric shape. We cut the cup of this and add a curve like here. So if you think about, so this, this curve below, below the X axis is the original, think about this as this is the, the neck with S in the cup. So this point Z represent S and we have a cup, a nice cup are around S. So what we do is we, we cut a small disc and change this revolution neck, this very symmetrical thing, to make a neck, instead of make, a, make it a close, remember that this is a, a, a compact manifold and, and S belongs to my manifold, instead of making it close, I make a neck, an open neck, like here. My neck will be a revolution in, in, this, in this picture. Think about a revolution some manifold made by this black curve. So I pick this black curve and I make a revolution and this gives our, our neck, right? I will, after, after this, I will make a, a, a drawing in the, in, the, 
in the screen for you to, to try to, to, to visualize this. So, and now we, we do the PSC extrinsic surgery handle. And here is where the topology enters, actually. So, uh, so let, let me let me do a, let me first a, a state the steps and then I will make a picture. So if a, so we have first we have f restricted to our sphere and this is an immersion of the sphere into R n plus p. The first thing we want is to extend this to a disk because this is exactly what a surgery handle is, right? So, so we have a, 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 our, our sphere and we want to remove the sphere and attach a handle, right? The first thing to attach a handle is to construct the handle. So I need to pick the sphere and extend it to a disk. This is what this disk is. And why I can do this? Well, because a, a very, also very famous paper by Smale in 59, he was interested to see when a, an immersion of the sphere extends to an immersion of a disk. And he realized that this is equivalent to the, the, the Stiefel manifold. The Stiefel manifold is simply the manifold of n minus k frames in Rn plus p, in, in this case, right? So uh, what he showed that is that you can, when this space is a p plus a p plus k minus one connect in in for this index set, right so and this is always the case when the codimension is bigger or equal than m minus two k so in if the codimension is bigger than m minus two k the stiffel manifold is connected to some degree and that allows us to construct the disk this is not enough because to have my surgery handle, I need that the, the normal bundle is also trivial, right? But here, what we see is that D is, D is a disk, so it's contractible. In particular, the normal bundle is trivial. And I have the normal bundle of the sphere inside the normal bundle of D restricted to S. And this normal bundle extends to a trivial normal bundle precisely because also the Stiefel manifold is connected to some degree. Now I need to uh, be a little bit more careful. I need to make P a little bit bigger in order to extend the normal bundle of the sphere inside the normal bundle of the disk. And then I just pick a tubular neighborhood of the normal bundle in the normal bundle, eh, a sphere bundle, and this is exactly my surgery handle. Right? So maybe, maybe I can, uh, or maybe I can leave the picture. I will leave that that picture to the end of of, of the presentation, just not to interrupt here. Uh, but of course, this. This tubular neighborhood inside the normal bundle has big curvature if the spheres inside the normal bundle has have a codimension, a, has dimension at least two. That is, if the surgery has codimension at least three. This is why uh, the codimension three enters. It's because what I need is that this sphere here at least has dimension two. Right? So that's why the codimension might be bigger or equal than three. Okay, about the corollary, um, as I as I said, uh, if if a manifold admits an immersion in R n plus p, but not in R n plus p minus one, like is the case, for example, for the the real projective space then it admits no PSC immersion in Rn plus P. Again, because the smallest dimension where I can put a manifold is the dimension of the stable normal bundle. The stable normal bundle is, cannot, have, cannot, cannot split 
a line, right? And for uh, from our main result, we can give a, a proof of the the Nash type theorem that is this that I already stated, right? And, and the, the the proof of, of this is also uh, is also relatively easy, right? Paolo. So this this is yes. the proof of the Sorry. I, I think somebody has the microphone on. Can you please switch off the microphone? Do you hear I me? Hear you and someone else. Sorry, can you all make sure the microphone is off? Oh, I think it's Paolo. Hey, Paolo, switch off the mic, please. Yes, Paolo, your, your microphone is on. I hope he's okay. Anyway, ah, um, okay. Yeah, please go on, Luis. I'm so sorry. Okay. So, um, in, in his famous paper that's all the gromov loso conjecture, Stoltz proved that um, if M is spin, uh, that, that M uh, is in fact spin bordant to the total space of a, a, a bundle with fiber HP2. And more recently, Furling proved the same for in the non-spin case for CP2. Right? So what we do is, is we pick the, the, this, this space, either HP2 in the, in the spin case or CP2 in the non-spin case. We put it inside the, the corresponding codimension for the Veronese immersion. The Veronese immersion, all, all all projective spaces admit a Veronese immersion, not, not just uh, RPM, right? So uh, the Veronese immersion of F4D is inside R6D plus 2, for D equal to 2 and 1, according to the spin or non-spin case. And then we pick the associated bundle. The associated bundle is this bundle. This is a vector bundle whose fiber is this and has the same base as the uh, original bundle here, E. Right? Now, Cohen, I use again Cohen proof of the immersion conjecture. Uh, this, this vector bundle admits an immersion into this Euclidean space. Um, I, we are not using the a coin theorem because coin theorem is only for compact manifolds and here we have a vector bundle that is not compact but it's like we can compactify the vector bundle this is why uh, we can apply a coin result so i can make this associated bundle a sub manifold or an immersion here and once we have an immersion here it's kind of natural because uh, this space, this vector bundle, is isomorphic to the normal bundle of the, the base, essentially. And so what we do now, so we have a, a, the, the normal bundle. Inside the normal bundle, I have this uh, natural Veronese embeddings. In particular, this HP2 and CP2 has positive uh, scalar curvature inside the, 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 the leads, and what we do now is the usual trigger trick. So we shrink the fibers in such a way that the fibers now, this F, F4D, uh, have very big sectional curvature. It's more than scalar curvatures, have very big sectional curvature. And that assures that the whole manifold now has positive scalar curvature. This is this is why the, 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 the corollary follows as a corollary from the main theorem. So, so let, me, uh, let me give you some references before I make the picture that I promised. Mm -hmm. So these are the, the references in the, in the talk. Mm -hmm. And um, so let me let me try to give you a hint, a better hint 
um, with um, making a picture. So hopefully now you see the the screen of my cell phone. Can you see? Yes. Okay. So so this is this is the situation. We have our manifold oh, M. Oh black. Oh okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was all black, but but your screen is black. Sorry, I'm, I'm stupid. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you can see it, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I can. Okay. okay. So this is our manifold M inside our N plus P. And I have my my sphere where I will apply a surgery a surgery to it. So I will I will make it for a dimension zero because it's the only thing I am able to, to draw, right? So we have our sphere that in our case is just two points. And then the first step is to to construct an a, a, so pick a neighborhood of of my sphere. In this case is S0. So I pick a neighborhood and in this neighborhood I make the the scalar curvature very big. Very big. And big, not only big, but big to a point where it is very symmetric. So here, here I have my, my sphere, my neighborhood, and here I pick a very, very symmetric uh, very symmetric um, deformation, right? And now the next, the next step the next is, step to, is to, to cut here, cut here. Right? So what I have now is this. And now I apply a gromov lawson uh, bending curve to make this open. And still PSC. So in, in our original picture, we now have this situation. Where the above part is is a revolution thing so it's very well controlled we know everything here and here in the middle you have a, a line given by the the using the the mean curvature vector of the original sum manifold Okay, now what, so this, remember, this is just a sphere, right? So the, in, in, in our case, is S0, that is the boundary of D1. And now I need to extend the sphere to an interval, to a disk. So what I need to do is this, to prove that this sphere extends to a disk in Rn plus P. And I, I can do this because of the codimension. I, because of the codimension, I know that the, the, um, the, the, the sphere extends to an immersion of the disk. On the other hand now, I have the normal bundle of the sphere inside M, that is this. And is contained in the normal bundle of the disk. This, what I'm a drawing here is the normal bundle of the sphere. And because also of the of the codimension restriction, this this uh, this the, the frame can be extended to a trivial frame along D. 
This is exactly what it means to be uh, p connected, right? That you have an, a, a map from the sphere to your space that you can deform to a point. And, and that deformation gives you an immersion of the disk, right? So now we have a normal, a, 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 a trivial bundle along D. And now what the only thing you need to do is to, to pick a, a sphere bundle small enough using the, the induced metric in such a way that it exactly fits in the neck. When you make this, 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 uh, uh, the, 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 the sphere bundle small enough, you make it fit in the neck and that gives you the whole surgery hand. So that is how you construct the surgery hand. Okay, so I think that is what I wanted to say. Uh, I hope it was more or less understandable. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, give a round of applause for Luis, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was an advanced talk, uh, which is great. Uh, um, are there any questions uh, from the public or comments? If if not, then um, sorry, is it? Yeah, maybe I can ask a question. Go ahead. So, um, so Luis, um, I mean, there are other curvature conditions which behave well under surgeries. For example, I think two compact manifolds have positive isotropic curvature. You can do a connected sun of them with also positive isotropic curvature. Do you think your techniques could also give intrinsic versions of such? Uh, I didn't think about it. Uh, I didn't know. No. The, the nice thing about positive scalar curvature, well, of course, is all the all the the the, the work done on, on the subject and the original question. And, but in in for, for some manifold, it's particularly nice because you always have this uh, the normal uh, uh, the, the mean curvature vector the that never vanishes. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a direction where you can deform the sum manifold to make it with very big positive scalar curvature, and you have an homotopy. When you mm -hmm. have that, then you suspect that everything should fit. Mm -hmm. You know this, right. this this fact. The the, the very the first the very first step you know, that the, that that is the trivial one that you can deform algebraically, the second fundamental form, that, that gives you a very strong indication mm -hmm. that you can apply the H principle to make it work. Mm -hmm. but, but you have the, the restriction given by the topology. So oh. when, when, you, when you want to remove the spheres and apply the handle, then you need to, to extend mm -hmm. the immersion of a sphere into immersion of a disk. And that you have to be careful with that. But then, then that, that is a restriction given by the codimension only, and the codimension is, is, is less than the dimension, so you are in witness uh, bound and everything is nice. Mm -hmm. okay. But I, I didn't think... Uh, so if, if you want to apply something similar to that, you need to assure that your condition has something that 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 uh, screams about doing an homotopy <laughs> right <laughs> right so if you want to apply the h principle there should be an homotopy around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, i don't know maybe maybe there are some other conditions where you can do a similar trick yes why not yeah i think the theory of positive isotropic curvature manifold is not as complete as the theory for positive scalar curvature. So, I don't know. Uh, but maybe this preliminary step of 
producing the collected cells inside the RN could be doable, I don't know. Yeah, here, here is, is very important that the surgeries have collimation three, at least mm -hmm. three, because you need to make the, the neck small enough, blowing up the curvature to preserve the positive curvature. Otherwise, you have no control on the curvature. Mm. In particular, for example, this technique does not work if the surgery has collimation two. Right. It's, it's actually false. It's false, actually yeah. false. Mm -hmm. If you if you think about it, it has to be false. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that was one end. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you pick, pick, exactly. <laughs> pick, a, pick a round pick a round sphere. Pick a round sphere, positive curvature. And then you say, uh, I will apply a codimension two surgery that is a connected sum to 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 have also positive scalar curvature. But if you make a connected sum of the sphere with yeah, the itself, <laughs> you get a torus. And a torus does not need a positive yeah. sectional curvature. So it, that, that is very nice. This yeah, is, a, this very is nice. a nice. So the codimension uh, is very important. Mm -hmm. for sure. OK. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, any more questions or comments? What is as as your principle? Sorry, can you can everybody please raise their hands so we can uh, keep an order? Uh, it's just downstairs. Um, so can you all please raise your hands? Cool, uh, Daniel. Then uh, I mean, uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, how how are you? Haven't seen you in a while from Chile. Uh, so it's a very basic question. I mean, in the, in the first step, when you want to uh, in, uh, immerse your manifold with this uh, prescribed second fundamental form, uh, uh, that's, that's uh, the basic step, the algebraic one, right? Uh, how does this uh, restrict your dimension? Uh, it, it doesn't. I mean, in principle, if you have any submanifold with positive scalar curvature in Rm plus P, you have this, this uh, formal second fundamental form uh, given by the, the formula I gave. That, that, there is no problem. There you have no, no uh, problem at all with your codimension. It could be any codimension. That, that is, there is no restriction. Actually, so what, what I'm saying actually is that around your sphere, you can always make this this bump with very big curvature. Uh -huh. That is okay. You can always do that. The problem is cutting and adding a handle. There you there is where your your codimension appears. Okay, but you can't lower that that much. I mean, the dimension of the embedding. I mean, if you go Nash, you lose a second fundamental form, right? Anyway, if you would like to improve all this. Okay, sorry, I I didn't understand what you mean. I mean, I mean, okay, so, it, I mean, uh, how do you say, with NAIC, uh, we can do it, right? Because there you have no restrictions uh, in your, uh, in, the, in the dimension, basically. It's just an immersion, right? There's well, if you look, if you look at, the, at the theorem, it, it, it's not quite a Whitney's codimension. It's a little bit bigger. So, for example, if you pick a, a real projective space, uh, of dimension two to the m, then you will have to add n nine uh, uh, to the codimension to the Whitney codimension. So it's yeah. not exactly with the codimension. For 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 b for generic n, it's big is Whitney codimension, but it's not always big uh, Whitney codimension. Okay, okay, and that has nothing to do with the first embedding that you made. It comes afterward with all these strange surgeries and stuff like that. No, no. The, actually, the first embedding could be in any codimension. Could be a hypersurface, for example. A, a, a hypersurface with positive color curvature. If you pick a sphere inside, then you can make a bump to make the curvature very big around that surface and make a very nice neck. There is no problem with that. The problem is if you want to cut that, that, 
the sphere and add a surgery handle. Then, then you have a lot of co-dimension restrictions. I mean, and, and last question, your techniques, you don't use these this, uh, equations and we all know this gauss codazzi and that stuff, you don't use that, do you? No. No, okay, I no, see. No, okay. not, not used at all. Not okay, I see, okay, 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 thank you. Uh, of course, I mean, of course, you need to assure that your deformations have positive scalar curvature, and that is yeah. Gauss equation. That is yeah. Gauss equation. That's Gauss right? codacy. Then, then you play a lead there, right? right. Then you have some yeah, game yeah. over so, there. So, okay. Okay. so you need to find the functions in order to make the homotopy to preserve the positive scalar curvature, and that is a lot of computation. Yeah, so, mean, so, that, so, so that's explicit. That's not H principle, right? Then, then you go. No, 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 no. Okay. That is explicit. That is okay, explicit. I see. Okay, I see. The H principle entered only in in the in one point where you extend the 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 bump with positive scalar curvature to the full manifold. I see. And that is where you need a, 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 the H principle. And that is why you need an homotopy. That is why you need an homotopy. Okay, thank you. Oh, are, are there any more questions or comments? Daniel, you can lower your hand now. Cool. Okay, so we might be, uh, you know, this might be a good time to thank the speaker again, please. Thank you.